Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one horse open sleigh. And we'd sing the Christmas carols on the sleigh all the way home. The music at Christmas makes, uh, I think, at Christmas, it, it, it does something for it. Sleigh bells ringing in the snow And kissing me the mistletoe Out in the barn the cattle low It's Christmas in the valley Christmas in the valley Oh, the valley lights will shine so bright All the world will seem so right When Santa on his magic night Comes to his children There'll be sleigh bells ringing in the snow And kissing me out in the barn, the cattle low. It's Christmas in the valley. Candlelight and hearts of glow. The silent dance of falling snow. Familiar songs on the radio. It's Christmas in the valley. In every town the church bells ring In every home a young child dreams In every heart the spirit sings It's Christmas in the valley Oh, the valley lights will shine so bright Kissing me the mistletoe Out in the barn the cattle low It's Christmas in the valley Out in the barn the cattle low It's Christmas in the valley Well, Merry Christmas in the valley, kids. Merry Christmas, Max. Merry Christmas, Wayne, and welcome home. Uh, you've been on the road again for another year? Yes, and uh, home again for Christmas, which is the proper place to be. You've seen virtually every corner of Canada in the last couple of years, and yet uh, the Ottawa Valley is still pretty special, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah, it, we have a beautiful country, but uh, I think the old adage holds true that no matter where you go, there's no place like home, so we're home. And I just hope that these kids will catch the magic that uh, we've all been able to. Oh, I'm sure they will. Are you, are you excited about Santa coming? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Good evening. <laughs> I'm Max Keeping, and I'm glad you can join all of us tonight for our musical celebration of Christmas in the Valley. You'll meet some familiar friends and a lot of brand new ones. So come on in, stay a while, help us celebrate Christmas the way it is now and the way it used to be. And kids, when you think of Christmas and winter, what's exciting about being outdoors? Snow. Snow. Snowmen. Rolling in the snow. Making Going sledding. Angels. Making angels. Making yeah. Going sledding. Going sledding and tobogganing. Making angels and going tobogganing and rolling down hills. Let us snow forever. Forever. Forever? You Let us snow forever? Oh, yippee. Then I could skate every day. <laughs> I don't even know how to skate. <laughs> You'll learn. You'll learn. That's a part of the magic of our winters, too. Skating lessons like I did. Oh. <laughs> Colleen, let it snow. A 
the fire is so delightful since we've really no place to go let it snow let it snow let it snow oh it doesn't show signs of stopping and i've brought some corn for popping with the lights turned But if you really hold me tight All the way home I'll be warm Oh, the fire is slowly dying But my dear, we're still goodbying And as long as you love me so Memories of Christmas usually evoke images of our childhood, a simpler time. These residents of the Bonisher Manor in Renfrew share fond reminiscences. Christmas was a special time for us at home. I had six sisters and four brothers, and my grandmother lived with us too. So we really, really had a happy time at Christmas. Finally, about six o'clock, you were allowed, allowed downstairs to see what Santa had brought. Of course, it was always a happy time. Big meals, and early to bed the next night. They all go home for Christmas, brothers and sisters. They'd be away at other places, and go home for Christmas, a big deal. Mother made dresses for baby, we got baby dolls, this about this, and Mother made a dress for every one of them. After we'd go to bed at night, she'd get busy and sew <laughs> those dresses. And uh, one sister of mine, she was a little smart, and, and she came downstairs one night, and uh, <laughs> Dad didn't like that. He said she was bold. And so she didn't get her... She only got a potato <laughs> in her stocking. <laughs> but through the day, she got the stocking. We really enjoyed looking for our gifts and picking them up and looking at them all. And Mother had knit us each a pair of mitts, which was just grand for us kids. The Mother used to get a bag, buy flour, buy sugar, and then the boy that throw that away, they used to make uh, pants out of that. And they were damn so strong about there now. We used to go to the school concert, and that's where we used to have the best times. Not to follow the school concerts, uh, make little plays and stuff. Uh. 
But one thing I remember, we were at church programs uh, Christmas Eve. It was the children's program. And uh, then we didn't have electric lights. There were all candles on the trees. So, and they'd light the candles, and one man had to watch the tree, and just in case the candles burned down. But it looked lovely when it was all lit up, and we enjoyed that so much. We used to hang our stockings up for Saturday, and we put stuff in. No, no electric lights or all coal oil lamps in the house and uh, stuff like that. Well, we used to have old fashioned Christmas, we had everything old fashioned. And... What else is great about Christmas? Mm. Christmas morning event. Presents. Presents? Where, do, do they hide them? Yeah. Yeah? They're all wrapped? Yeah. And, and you, do you look to see who they're from, or you just tear them open? Tear them open. <laughs> You'll find out who they're from later, right? Yes. I, I check who they are from. Do you, yeah. Do you guess? Do you try to guess what's inside? Yeah. No? No. Joel, do you open the biggest one that's under the tree, or the littlest one? First, the biggest one. You figure out what's going to be in the biggest one this year. You got an idea? Brian has Christmas at your house. Oh, fine. And what ha what happens? Do you ever do you ever sing like uh, Chris and all her brothers and sisters? Yes. Yeah. Mm -mm. What do you sing? Songs. Chris McCann, you grew up in a house with 16 kids. What was Christmas like at your house? Well, it went something like this. Let's go. Christmas tree 
won't be the same, dear, when you're not here with me. And when those blue snowflakes start falling, that's when those blue, blue, blue memories start calling. Christmas of white, and I'll have a blue, 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 blue Christmas. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. I'll be so The sound of music adds to the charm of Christmas. In the Ottawa Valley, musical traditions are kept alive with old-time fiddlers, dancers, and musicians. Well, we just all get together and uh, we'd square dance and we'd uh, sing and we'd uh, the wife would put on a buffet out here and and the guys and oh, we'd just have a real good time and the kids would all come home. That was the big thing to have the kids home for Christmas. Eh? Yes. I remember when as a child we. Um we used to drive, like, go to my grandparents over in Loch Winn of there, and I remember my dad driving through the field with the chains rattling on the car, you know, you got to... Many a time we got stuck going there, but my grandfather played the violin, and we had... We'd have a nice time. We made our own entertainment and our own enjoyment. And, uh... But the music... Uh, as we went along. I mean, I learned on a fiddle, I paid a dollar for it. You know, and, and, and it was, it got so hateful, I had to do something, get better or quit. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's better than all the nerve pills you can take, you know. Just a matter of a phone call away and you got all the entertainment you want. I mean, that that's something to be able to say yeah. in this day and age. Yeah. And And it was all for free. This was country Christmas. This was country Christmas, you see. At Ortona, the Canadians paused for Christmas. 
most of the Canadian units, as far as I know, I know we did anyway, every Christmas we always got uh, a quart of beer. Every Christmas. And I always made sure that I could get two guys that didn't drink, and I'd sit in between them. And that went on Christmas after Christmas. Uh, I, well, you get to know the guys after with them so long, you get the, the knowers, and you'd sit in between. But three pints of, or three quarts of beer would sometimes make you feel pretty good when you weren't used to it. Mr. Wilmot, do you remember a lot of Christmases? Any one particular Christmas that's fondest in your memory? Yes. <clears throat> one that stands out uh, the most was uh, uh, during my last war. This was in Italy. And uh, it was a small village in the mountains north of Florence. And uh, we had to do something for the children of the village at Christmas time. And luckily, we were close to an American uh, unit, uh, and we managed to pick up some cartoons of Mickey Mouse and some ice cream. Mm -hmm. So uh, we passed word along in the village, and uh, uh, we had a hall, and we uh, entertained the, the children at, uh, on Christmas Day. And we all had to look after a bambino. And so uh, you can imagine what we looked like after the party. Uh, because there was chocolate cake, mm -hmm. and there was ice cream and everything. Anyhow, it turned out to be a very uh, pleasant uh, occasion for not only the soldiers, but for the children and the parents of the children. Your generation, and uh, certainly passed on to my generation, the feeling of family and sense of being together, particularly at Christmas. Yet in a very mobile society of the, of the 90s, families are quite often split up at Christmas. It's, it's kind of tough to keep that family bonding. Can he, uh, any advice for people who are apart from uh, their loved ones at Christmas as to how you, how you don't lose that feeling of solidarity with each other? Get yourself a good book and a bottle of scotch. <laughs> <laughs> and that's about all I can tell you on that. <clears throat> you know, one of, the, uh, one of the most beautiful of the Christmas songs that perhaps best portrays the kind of feeling that one might have had as, as you did in, in Italy and uh, overseas or apart from family at Christmas is our next our next song Silent Night
Cora Yule, and I'm 85 year old, and I'd like to read this poem, it's Christmas. I like to spend the Christmas day that's filled with joy and cheer, to some it may bring gladness, but to other sores and tears. The years bring many changes in one way or another, but we do not know what lies ahead or what may come tomorrow. But Christmas always comes, whether it rains or snows. The little children are still the same as they were long years ago. Merry Christmas to you all, and a happy new year too. May the years that lie ahead be especially good for you. Does Christmas have any spiritual meaning for young people in the, uh, in the 90s, right? Well, I, I'd think so, but nowadays I think that more kids are, are looking for their presents, they're looking through catalogs, and they're, they're not really thinking of what, what actually happened. They're just more thinking of what else can they get and what, what they're going to get for their parents, but that's the main point, what they're going to get for other people. Helen, in your household, is, does Christmas have a, a Christian meaning, a, a spiritual meaning? Yes, but there's also the, the Santa part, and it takes a lot away, but Christmas Eve, it really comes through. Christmas Eve, you go to church? Yeah, we go to church, and Christmas morning, go to church, and we sing songs before we open presents, and my daddy reads out of the Bible, and then it all comes first, and then we can open the presents. <laughs> so there's a, pri there's a priority here, at least for, for a part of Christmas Day. Jenny? Um, we have the same thing as Alan's house. Um, spirit in Christmas Eve is really great, and then uh, we read from the Bible and go to church, and the next day is all the tradition stuff. Christmas and Santa Claus and stuff like that. You live in the country. Do you, do you see a lot of old-fashioned Christmases there? Not anymore. Well, sometimes when we go up to visit our relatives, we have sing songs and and uh, have big dinners for Christmas and go to church. Lots of families and yeah. stuff. Christmas does does stay the way that it used to be in the songs that we sing now. You go to church on Christmas Eve. Is there is there a particular hymn that you feel best about when you're singing on, on Christmas Eve? All the traditional ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love a little town of Bethlehem. And it helps me picture, and for yeah. me that becomes Christmas. <clears throat> and I'm hoping there's a little snow, and, and and I think of the of the scene that the kids are are looking at. You think more like the the songs give you a picture in your mind and, and you remember what your parents teach you about about Jesus and, and the Lord and all that. Well, one of the most beautiful of those songs lives on and keeps Christmas very much alive. Mm -hmm. Ted?
shepherds watch their flocks by night. They see a bright new shining star. They hear a choir sing a song. The music seemed to come from afar. Storytelling has long been an honored tradition in the Ottawa Valley, and at Christmas time, these tall tales take on a decidedly festive flavor. One time, Santa Claus was over the Ottawa Valley at Christmas Eve, and he was flying with his reindeers. He got up over around on the Opiongo Hills, and all the iron in there made his compass go all swinging around. And he got going the wrong direction, and first thing he knew, he was out over the big lake. And he realized that. And so he said, whoa, and they stopped the reindeers and they started to float down. And he realized they were going to hit the water. So he said, get up. And so they started up again, but one reindeer didn't get up enough steam. And he just couldn't get up high enough to pass the pinnacle hill at Renfrew. And they went slam into a snowdrift. Well, they couldn't get out. But just then, luckily, Big Joe Muffra was coming down the valley from a visit up to the bush camp, and he had his big moose broad axe, it weighed 20 ton. Joe Muffra said, G'day, Santa Claus. Santa Claus said, G'day, Joe Muffra. Boy, am I ever glad to see you. He says, we can't get out of here. Can you help us? He said, sure, I can help you. Pretty soon he was back, and he had three big pine logs and some chains, and he made a plow out of those big pine logs, and he tied him with the chain, and he hits broad axe to them, and he plowed a great big runway out in front. And then he grabbed the front reindeers by the harness, and he pulled them on and pulled on, and he pulled Santa Claus and the reindeers and the sleigh and everything out on the snow into the clear spot. And Santa Claus says, thanks a lot, Joe Muffero. He says, I'm in a hurry, I have to go, but I'll remember you at Christmas. Look for a special gift. That's how Joe Muffero met Santa Claus. A 
highlights of the liturgical calendar in our big family in the 1930s was Christmas Eve midnight mass. About uh, 7 o'clock, 12 of us would line up, get onto the big sleigh, sloops we called it, with a team of farm horses, and we'd go to the village church about five miles away. But this particular year, we just got to the church and it began to rain. And it rained heavily all the time we were at the church. It rained all evening, and it was just stopping about the time we were ready to go home, about 3 o'clock. So here we are with a dozen of a family, big team of horses and a big sleigh that's intended for snow, and there isn't any snow. So my father took the team and drove through ditches or any place that was water or mud, even grass, drove into fields whenever it was possible and eventually got home. The rest of us all walked, the 11 of us walked. We got home about 4.30 in the morning. That's one Christmas Eve I shan't forget. Tired. Well, I guess you better come with me. Little toy trains, little toy tracks, little toy drums coming from a sack, carried by a man dressed in white and red. Little boy, don't you think it's time you were in bed? Close your eyes, listen to the sky. All is calm, all is well. Soon you'll hear Chris Kringle and the jingle bells bringing little toy trains, little toy. Toy drums coming from a sack, carried by a man dressed in white and red. Little boy, don't you think it's time you were in bed?
swell. Soon you'll hear Chris Kringle and the Jingle Bells bringing little toy trains, little toy tracks, little toy drums coming from a sack carried by a man dressed in white and red. Little boy, don't you think it's time you were? Well, we hope that you've enjoyed visiting with us tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to come into your home and to share some of the Christmas in the Ottawa Valley. And you know, probably the greatest joy of Christmas is to share your joy with someone else. And Wayne, certainly that's what the musicians have done for us tonight. Oh, it's been a marvelous uh, hour. When you think of it, all the music that we heard on our program tonight has been from people right here in the Valley. We're very blessed, very blessed. We've always had a large number of musicians who've gone on around the world who've come out of the Ottawa Valley. Any reason for that? I think what we've done is uh, the music that sort of came to the Valley many years ago, our forefathers, that music we've drawn on, we've expanded upon, and this is really, I think, the highlight of all that we've learned in the Valley musically, coming together at a special time like this, this time of year and, and sharing in, in the, the happiest season of all, and to do it all musically on Christmas in the Valley. We've certainly cherished, too, as we've seen throughout the program, the art of storytelling. And that's, that's a part of our, our culture in the Valley. And uh, I hope that this generation will never lose that. Well, they've experienced it in this hour. Did you have fun? Yeah. Well, yeah. well I thank you all very much. Thank you. Good night. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. everyone. Savior.